Hello, uh, back in the DTR shed. Um, been away a little bit longer than we were really hoping for, but we're here now, so let's crack on. Um, what we're going to be talking about today is build one of these little fellas. Uh, it's an aluminium cafe racer mudguard. Um, in this particular instance, it's one of a type that we make quite a lot of for the guys over at Red Max Speed Shop. Um, yeah, they supply a lot of cafe racer and flat tracker parts. Um, yeah, good guys, check them out. I must stress that we're not actually talking mass production here. They're not stamped out in a few seconds each, I can assure you of that. Uh, that said, they're not sort of one-off handmade things completely. Uh, so effectively what we're talking about is batch production. And that leads quite nicely into one of our famous off-piste moments which will be on the subject of uh, tooling. Uh, an interesting thing about um, panel beating, fabrication, all that kind of stuff, uh, is that while there is a plentiful supply of, of new and shiny things um, available, uh, there's also very good results can be achieved by using a bit of imagination and, and making your own stuff, basically, using stuff you find along the way. Uh, Got some examples here, um, starting with two of the delightfully named slappers. Yeah, always gets a laugh. Um, little steel one here, just made that up from a piece of old bed frame. Uh, well, the wooden one, yeah, that started life as an axe handle. That one, uh, probably news to nobody, but that is, or was, a fire poker. Uh, now, uh, after I found it in a skip and polished up one end of it, it's a ball stake, which can be clamped in a vise and uh, used for tight radius work. On a slightly more technical level, we've got this fellow, um, which is a, a screw press. Um, someone actually gave me that. Very nice of them. Uh, John, if you're out there, thank you very much. Um, I then adapted it using some slightly Heath Robinson tooling um, and it now has become an integral part of the mudguard producing process so you'll be meeting that one uh, a little bit later on. Um, anyway, speaking of mudguards, we better get on with it. While uh, with tooling and, and that kind of thing, um, improvisation and doing your own thing can yield some really good results. When it comes to the matter of uh, raw materials, having a good reliable supply of, of quality stuff is very beneficial. Um, a lot of good, good metal suppliers out there um, and a number of them will do a cut to size service which is the way we get these done. As you can see this is just a little a little blank effectively of uh, sheet aluminium um, which we get sent down, we get sent batches of them all ready for forming into the mudguards. First step in forming the mudguard is some really basic shaping done with some equally basic hand tools. First up, the slapper, which we've already met. Uh, we have the, the sandbag and the shop bag and a nice big mallet. So, we start with, with the uh, wooden slapper and just start working along the middle of the sheet of metal. See, that has just started to introduce some shape into the metal. Then, next move is to flip it over, put it on top of the shop bag, and just start bashing the edge down with the mallet. Obviously, at all times, minding your fingers. Once you've attacked it sufficiently, this is what you end up with. A sort of rough shaped piece of aluminium ready to move on to the next process. Right, having uh, made a start at, at doing the rough shaping with slapper, the, the mallet and, and sandbag, we're now going to move on to using the aforementioned press, which we met a little bit earlier. Uh, and that is going to be employed just refining the, the curvature, the profile, and getting everything a little bit more uniform. So just pop 
the piece of metal in there and tighten the press down, move it forward, press again, move it again, and so on until we've gone down the whole length and uh, just tidied up the the whole shape of the uh, of the piece. Having put the uh, the piece through the press, we've now got a nice uniform uh, lateral curvature, and have created something not dissimilar to a slightly shiny piece of guttering. Uh, the obvious shortcoming at the moment is the complete lack of longitudinal curvature, which is a bit necessary for a, a mud guard. So that will be our next job. Uh, which we'll be using the uh, things like the shrinker, the English wheel, etc. First job in getting some longitudinal curvature going and actually making it mudguard shaped is to run the piece through the shrinker. Just run it right down each side. Uh, you see we've made a, a small start here. Uh, so yeah, what this does is actually compact the metal in on itself. Um, and literally just shortens each side compared to the middle, creating the shape. And um, you can actually start to see it, it come there, and then we'll switch over, do the other side. Okay, it's all refusing to reset there. We're back, we're away now. And there we go. And there we go, we've got a little bit of twist in it, that's easily fixed. Um, we have the beginnings of the familiar shape. So we now want to raise uh, and, and stretch out the centre part of the guard. So we're going to use the English wheel for that. And just run it through, just give it a few passes, which will also just help smooth out any oh, lumps and bumps. Uh, and further increase the amount of shape that we've got. And that's, yeah, that's just starting to work there. Uh, a lot more to do, obviously, but uh, yeah, um, progress. The um, English wheel and the shrinker have obviously sort of given us a good start. Um, but just to speed the process up a little bit, um, judicious use of a bossing mallet can prove quite useful. Um, just tapping along the, the length of the guard. Um, obviously you don't want to go mad because the more you hit it, the more lumps and bumps, the, the dreaded walnuts you will cause, and the more you've then got to sort out. So yeah, don't, don't, don't go over the top on that, but just, just give it a, a quick working over like this. You can see that's now raised the crown just that little bit further. So it's now a case of repeating. Um, bossing mallet, English wheel, shrinker, if necessary back to the press just to refine the curve. Once you've uh, refined the shape of your mud guard and you're reasonably happy with it, comes time to just give it a quick check on the old uh, wooden buck. So that's what we've, we've got to so far and we can plop that on and yeah, that particular one, got a little bit of a gap there which we've tidy up, but basically not bad. Right, next stage is to um, trim the guard once it's been shaped. And so for that, I'll just actually put a little bit of marking glue down the inside edge on each side. Um, then um, what we do, just put the guard upside down like that pop the buck into the guard, reach in with a marker pen and just mark the centre line each side Then we get a, a centre and then take a little metal scriber 
and you, then just go down the edge and that will give us our edge marks to cut to. So once you've done your marking, uh, you can see you've then got marks to, to cut to, so it's just a case of quick trim down each edge, um, are you using a bench shear, tin snips, just file it off, whatever, whatever you have to hand. Once you've done your trimming, uh, next job is to give it all a, a sort of final check over. Um, just give it a final run on the buck, that one's looking quite good. And then, with the lateral curvature gauge, again, that's not looking too bad. And finally, perhaps most importantly, a little gauge for the longitudinal curvature along the edge. Uh, and in fact that, on this one, is revealing we do have a slight bit of adjustment to make. Uh, it's got a, a little bit of a flat spot there. Um, that can be taken out with the shrinker or uh, whatever other tool is appropriate. Once you're happy with the basic shape of your guard and everything's trimmed and, and good, next thing is to mark up for the cutting of the ends. And that, you need a really tech piece of kit, uh, a cardboard template. Just get it in there, nice and central, on your end mark there, and then round you go with your marker pen. And there you are. That's now ready to be trimmed again, bench shear, tin snips, whatever you got to hand. Off you go. There we go. That's the end curve all uh, all nicely put in place. Next stage is to check the surface finish of the guard. Uh, for that, coat it with marking blue. Uh, we've just done a small patch uh, for now. Uh, and then sand it off. We're actually stuck uh, back using uh, an old uh, sanding block because uh, our orbital sander has just gone pop. So that, that's off games at the moment. Um, so yeah, just start sanding it back. And, well, more to do there, but you can see we've got the blue is left in the low points and has been skimmed off the high points. Um, so that sort of reveals um, where we need to start smoothing things out. And for that, uh, you can use the English wheel, hammer and dolly. Um, for the lesser bits, you can just, just use a body file just to smooth it out. Um, whatever tool is appropriate. Uh, final stage of completing the guard is to put the little decorative bead on. But before we get to that, there's a question of surface finish. Uh, that's achieved quite simply just by working down through various grades of uh, flap disc, flap wheel, and then a little bit scotch bright uh, for finally just a quick smear of polish just to try and keep the, the dreaded finger marks at bay. Uh, obviously normally we would not present the guard in this condition. Um, this is just done as a little sort of show piece um, to try and uh, show the different levels of finish uh, as we work down through as you can see from the sort of the coarse flat disc at one end to the, the polish at the other. Right, final job to put the little decorative bead on for which we use the imaginatively named bead roller and there it is ready to uh, well roll. To actually put the bead on what we do is just pop the end of the mud guard in uh, we've got a, a little stop, a fence, already preset for the right uh, depth, uh, the right distance from the end of the guard. And then just introduce a little bit of uh, tension with the tensioning bolt. Don't want to go too far too soon, just just uh, just a little bit. Just to, and then just start running the bead around the end of the guard. Uh. 
like that. Now one thing you will see from there, which I should have mentioned earlier in fact, is there's a little pen mark there, and you'll have to take my word for it, there's some more on the inside. Uh, that is actually just a little mark for where, where, we, where we want the end of the bead. So that's what we have straight off the bead roller. Um, as you can see, it's produced a reasonably nice bead. One thing we've got left to do is tidy up the ends. Okay, the final final move, uh, and somewhat appropriately, it is with a homemade tool. It's just a little steel clip that goes over the end of the bead, like that. We just line it up with the pen mark where we want the end of the bead, and with carefully calibrated mole grips, just give it a squeeze. Like that. And ooh, yeah, that's just tidied the end of the bead a little bit. A little bit of work still to do, maybe just with a file or something, but basically we're there. So there we go from beginning to end. Uh, if we've inspired you to want a mudguard, then do check out Red Max Speed Shop. Uh, if we've inspired you to make your own mudguard, then hopefully you now know everything you need to know. Uh, if you do want any more information, feel free to pop a question in the comments. And if you have any polite suggestions as to what you'd like to do next, um, then yeah, again, stick them in the comments. Um, in the meantime, thank you very much for watching and we'll hope to see you again soon.